uh, Florindo Vieira, who became Porky Vieira, or the pork, uh, was a Portuguese immigrant who grew up in the uh, Italian ghetto of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And uh, he was a tough kid, absolute the kind of guy who should be served. If he didn't get involved in sports, he would have been in jail. And he became a basketball player, went on to Quinnipiac University, became the highest scoring basketball player in the country in the early 50s, early mid 50s. And the catch was he was five feet five inches tall, maybe shorter. He was, he was tiny. And, and his partner was 5'3". Yeah, his Ernie partner, Ernie Petrucciano, yeah. who was the guy who set him up, was 5'3". And they became the greatest combo in college basketball. They became very famous, put Quinnipiac on the map, which at the time was a school whose students couldn't spell the name of the school. It was a commuter school. And now their scores were being broadcast with Kentucky and North Carolina and Duke. And uh, Porky was the greatest shot maker who ever lived. And he was also an absolute madman. He once ran from Bridgeport to Danbury on a dare because somebody said he wasn't in good shape. So he took off and his friends followed him in the car and he ran all the way, it was about 24 miles. Um, and he, uh, he was an idol of mine. And when I was a kid, I was 14, he was maybe 21. And I would go to North End Boys Club where they would play basketball. And all the college kids, guys would come at night and they'd play these tough three, four man games. And us younger kids who were freshmen, sophomore, would stand and watch trying to pick up something. These were loser sits games, winner yes. stays. Yeah, the, so, the, so the you might have four or five teams and the, the winner kept playing. So if you lost, you might not play for another hour, an hour and a half. So it was very important to win those games. You want me to tell the story? About oh, yeah, yeah, please do. So now, Porky's team was tied 10-10 to a game of 11. One of his players sprains his ankle. So now, if he doesn't get another player, they got to forfeit the game. So there are no older guys free because all the other guys were committed to these other teams that were waiting. So he grabs me, the first guy he saw, a 14-year-old kid, pulls me on the court. He tells me, he says, don't do anything. You get the ball in your hands, you just pass it to me. That's all you got to do. All right. So we, I saw well, the game starts going on. I'm out by the keyhole. These big guys are banging each other around. The ball goes up, bounces off the rim, goes up in the air. I'm looking at it, you know. Ploop, it lands right in my hand. I look, the ball's in my hands. I figure, what the hell? I go up for a jump shot. Just as I'm about to shoot it, Porky comes leaping out of the sky, trying to block the shot. He screams at me, no, 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 don't shoot. I shoot the ball, he hits me, knocks me down on, the, on my rear end. The ball goes in, we win. I jump up, waiting to be congratulated, and Porky starts screaming at me. He says, nobody takes the last shot in Porky's team. Nobody ever does that. What are you, crazy? <laughs> And it eventually it became a joke. Porky, every time Porky would see me, he'd pull me onto the court and he'd say to all the guys, you realize this guy, he said, he took the last shot on Porky's team. There, there are always a lot of words that are used in uh, when you tell it uh, orally and not on television that cannot be repeated on That's television. That's right, you have to read it. <laughs> so um, the Porky, that became my persona, the kid who was crazy enough to take the last shot on Porky's team. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.